This week, Rabbi Yaakov um, Vichtzera, there's a famous question, right? Jews aren't allowed to count themselves. You can't go and, you know, say you have a group of people and you want to know how many people. You're not allowed to just go and count them. So you need to, you know, either count them by using, uh, uh, you know, either counting items of clothing or, or there are all sorts of ways of going around this. But you're not allowed to count. And so the, the, the question is, why can't you count? And the first place, by the way, we see this is in this week's Torah portion, Kitisa, where we are told that the Israelites, um, uh, right, it's the first time that we're being counted. But in order to count ourselves, we are told we need to bring a ransom. We need to bring half a shekel. And it's very clear that in order to, to, to count, you need to bring this half a shekel. And so the question is, why can't you count? And why do you need to bring this ransom? Why do you bring this half a shekel? So Rabbi Yaakov Vichtzera, he says, as we know, you know, all the Torah can be interpreted, you know, it alludes to, to different secrets. And this is one of such cases. He says, take the name Israel. The name Israel in Hebrew is an acronym for Yesh Shishim Ribo Otiot La Torah. There are 600,000, uh, not to, we shouldn't take 600,000 literally, it's more like just a big figure. There are 600,000 letters um, in the Torah. Okay. This means that in the name Israel, the people of Israel, is the secret of how many letters there are in the Torah. And from here, Rabbi Yaakov tells us, we know from this, why didn't God take the Israelites out of Egypt until they were 600,000 souls? In order for the, each soul to receive its specific letter at Mount Sinai. Right? So, so we need, and what this means is, each and every one of the Israelites has a part in the Torah. As a result, God is willing to forgive us for anything. But whenever we start mucking around and, and not studying Torah, not, not having a special connection with this book, which our souls are ontologically connected to, each and every one of us, he can't forgive. And here's the thing Rabbi Yaakov says. Sam, we're going to call him Sam. Sam is the evil devil, the archangel. He comes to God and says, every time we muck around, he says, look at this, look at this, this people. He says, these people that are a hundred, that, you know, that, that their numeric value, the number of Jews that there are in the world, their name alludes to the letters in the Torah, implying the primordial connection. The reason you created this world was for the Torah, for the Israelites to have it so that every soul studies its, its specific letter. And, and these guys aren't doing what they're meant to do. Come on, get, put them put them in my custody, and let's get rid of them. And this is why we can't just count, because anytime we count ourselves, if some of us aren't doing what we're supposed to or studying Torah, Sam wakes up and says, God, let's do something. And therefore we pay the half a shekel, because, half a, because we do this, the Torah says that if you don't pay the half a shekel, you'll get a negif, you'll get infected. And infection, uh, Rabbi Yaakov says, is the numeric value of Sam, of this evil devil. So we give the half a shekel as a sort of ransom for Sam to shut him up. Why? Because by giving half a shekel, you're doing tzedakah. You, you're giving charity. And that's a mitzvah. And when you do this, you shut him up and, and, and everything's okay. So this is, this is, this is a fascinating uh, question about why we can't count and what Rabbi Yaakov says. Now the Maggid of Zlotchov goes somewhere else. Again, he's going Hasidic on us. There's a verse that says, right, so we have the sin of the golden calf, speaking of sins, and there's a very weird verse, a verse that says, um, you know, Moses says to God after the sin, if you don't, uh, um, you know, if you don't forgive them for their sin, uh, you know, if you forgive them for their sin, uh, uh, it, it sort of, it says, if you f d forgive them for their sin, and if you don't, erase me from your books. It's a sin, it's a book, it's, it's, it's a verse that's hard to understand. And the way Rashi explains it is, if you forgive them for their sins, great. If you don't, erase me from your book, meaning I don't want any part of this. Now the Maggid of Zlotchev reads the verse. He has a problem with Rashi's interpretation because he says Rashi's not reading this literally. This isn't, he says, if you read it literally, the verse actually says, if you uh, forgive them and if you don't, erase me from your books. That's what the verse says. So he doesn't have a problem, of course, with Rashi, but he's saying, I have a different interpretation. He says, the way I understand it is the sages already taught us that uh, um, why does a righteous person at Tzaddik die, or a Hasidic Rebbe, if we like, that's what we're talking about. Why does a righteous person die? Um, for two reasons. One, uh, to be a ransom, right? To, sort of for, to atone for the sins of the Jews. And the other one is so that he doesn't see 
uh, uh, you know, the Israelites uh, being punished. It's too hard to see punishment. So either he, he either dies, the, the tzaddik, the righteous person dies because he doesn't want to see the Israelites being hurt, or in order to atone for their sins. And this is how we read the verse. Moses actually had said, um, you know, if you forgive them, and if you don't, either way, you know, if you forgive them, take me to atone for their sins. If you don't forgive them, take me because I don't want to see it. Thoughts on the Torah portion of Kitisa, two very different views on two very different topics. Shabbat Shalom.